The Albany, the IPTV, down there. At what, what, what's the area? It's the Leo Sports and Social Centre in Kitts Green, Birmingham. And it's award night. Awards night for East Side Gym. Yeah, and uh, who's getting what? Come on, tell me. Right, tonight we've got uh, we've got the Amateurs Awards, because we've got the Amateur Gym that train along, well, they train separately to us, but we use the same building. Mm -hmm. We've got the Professional Awards, where we're rewarding some of our professionals uh, for their hard work this year. And for the first time ever, we've got the Lenny Woodall Outstanding Achievements Award, which is open to both amateur or professional. That's going to go to one person each year that does something outstanding. That does, you know, it could be an amateur winning a Commonwealth or a, an ABAs. It could be a pro winning a big fight. Or it's, it, it has to be a real outstanding achievement, and that's going to be presented for the first time tonight. And that's obviously because Richie died. Lenny died early on this year, didn't he? Yeah, Lenny was uh, one of the founders of our, the pro side of his side, Jim. And he, he goes beyond being a boxing trainer. Mm -hmm. Like Sam Egginson says in an interview with the Boxing News, if you was going to a fight, Lenny's a guy that you want in the car with you. I hope he meant a boxing match, but Lenny's the kind of guy, if you was going to any kind of fight, he's the kind of guy that you want in a car with you. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got a Lenny's corner in the gym, which is a corner of the gym where he used to sit and... Uh, dole out his advice it's Lenny's corner all his pictures are there and now we're going to have our Lenny Wood All Outstanding Achievements Award each year that I want the lads to really aim to and that's that's the ultimate award at these awards well John I mean I'm going to be staying here tonight I'm going to be filming the awards so you might as well give us a rundown ok you what then I'll have to have a look because there's quite a few um, the most promising award for the amateurs uh He's going to go, it's a joint one this one, mm -hmm. a young lad called Rice, I don't even know his second name because I work well with the pros, Rice, and a, a female boxer we've got called Tori Willits who just made her debut and she stopped her opponents and they're, going to, they're the joint winners of the most promising award, I expect to see good things off both of them. Yep. Rice will only be boxing this year because he's only young, he's not even ready for his, uh, he's not old enough for his medicals yet, <laughs> but he's showing that much promise and Tori we think will win the novices this year so they're winning the, the most promising the next one up is the most sporting. Even though we sort of got a, a reputation as a very uh, competitive club and hard working and hard fighting club, we also like to have the reputation of people who will take defeats on the chin, people who, if they have a bit of banter before, they're, you know, they're friendly, win or lose afterwards. So there's a most sporting award, and that's going to go to one of our lads who's one of our most toughest and hardest competitors in the fact that he doesn't like ducking a punch, Miles Vale. He's winning the most sporting award. The next one that's going up is the most improved, and that's overall juniors and seniors. The winner of that is going to be a lad called Usman Ali. Usman last year was one of those who was just missing out, fighting good kids and just losing to them. But you could see that it was just confidence that was stopping him. Usman this year... He got a silver medal in the Nationals. He went up and won the GBs and represented England. And he lost a very close decision to perhaps the best junior amateur boxer in the country, Charlie Frankham. So Usman's the number two in the country and Charlie Frankham's just moved up. And that's from a kid who last year was struggling to win them big fights at Midlands level. So Usman Ali's going to be winning the most improved. John, just for the minute. How long have you been set up now? Is it 2008 you set the amateur side? 2008, Paul Cunahan, along with... Clarence Brown, Paul Gibbs, and Glenn Bennett mm -hmm. set up Eastside ABC. They they started with five boxers. Yep. Obviously, I was working the pros with Richie and Len Woodall at this stage, and we were kind of friends then, yeah. And we and we worked together when we needed to. We helped each other. And uh, Eastside ABC have gone from strength to strength. They've won eighteen national titles. They've had twenty eight national finalists. They're the only Midlands club to have won the Haringey Cup, the club trophy. They're such a successful gym. Paul was having a few problems with his gym. We was having a few problems with our gym two or three years ago. And we decided to merge them together. Mm -hmm. Training at different times because it's far too busy for them to train together. But it's, re it's really done the world of good. And now Eastside Gym, uh, with the passing of Lenny, it's got myself and Paul as the kind of head coaches. Yeah. Paul's son, Louis Cunahan, is the pad man for the pros. And he's the, he's the uh, amateur coach the guy who takes him in the corner yep. he's one of the best young trainers about and he's soaking it up working with good guys amateurs and pro uh, Max Maxwell's our strength and conditioning coach yep. well, well, you know Max. and you know Max has just slotted in and he works the corners with us uh, Kerry Kay has helped us also, 
helps us on fight night with nutrition and he does the cuts work another like cog in, even though he's not in Birmingham he's a cog in the machine yep. and then we've got a few um, assistant trainers in I'll probably forget someone and get killed here but if I do I'm really sorry Neil Haightley he's one of the amateur coaches who also works with the pros uh, Chris Westwood helps us out has to do it around his job but he helps us out when he can um, we've got some guys who work with pros that kind of work with us as well. Carl Williams is one of those. We've got a really good setup now, a really strong setup, and it shows with the strength of the amateur club and the, the, the growing strength of our professional fighters. The next award, um, because we have got a reputation as uh, an exciting gym, the am next amateur award is most exciting fighter, simple as that. That award goes to a lad who I've got my eye on in a, a year or two's time, or I think we'll make a fantastic pro, a lad called Casey Benjamin. He's 19 or maybe just turned 20, and he's scoring knockouts with either hand in the amateurs. He likes to fight, he likes to brawl, we're trying to tone that down a bit, but the most exciting award goes to Casey Benjamin. The next award um, is the Perseverance Award. As you know in the amateurs, three rounds, it's a bit of a rush. Sometimes the judges, it seems like they fell asleep. And some of these young lads have to really persevere and work hard. You hear all these stories about the real top lads who lost the first 10 fights. And then 10 years later, they're world champions. And you do hear them stories. This award is for a lad who's had a couple of really close decisions go against him. He hasn't let his chin drop. He hasn't get worried. This is little Dav gets the most, uh, the Perseverance Award. The next one is the Team Player Award. Our gym has actually been noted in boxing news that they've never seen support off the other boxers at a boxing show like it. All the pros go to watch the amateurs. The amateurs, all the way down to the 11 year olds, travel all over the country to watch the pros. And that's part of that, you know, being a team player, supporting your teammates. It's a lonely place in the ring, and them extra voices sometimes do make a, uh, a difference. The team player award uh, has gone to two lads. We couldn't split them because they go everywhere. They find their way into every dressing room. We've, they've been seen on TV in Anthony Joshua's dressing room. How they got in there, we don't know. And uh, that is Kazim Ali and Joseph Pegg. The team player award is a joint win between Kazim Ali and Joseph Pegg. The next one is an important one. It's the most dedicated. The most dedicated award, and this is for training, not just for turn, but who trains hard, spars hard. And it's no coincidence, the person who's winning the most dedicated award is Ibrahman Suleiman, better known as Spider. Spider has won three national titles, box for England, he got picked for the Europeans, but they got cancelled. So it's no coincidence that he wins the most dedicated award. Put two and two together, most dedicated, wins lots of national titles. The next one is an award that I actually come up with myself. I'm taking the credit for this. It's Eastside Shining Example. Now this is gonna be chosen each year. It could be for someone who's had the most fights and who's boxed the best. It could be for someone who's took a fight at short notice and not moaned. This year it's going to a lad. He hasn't actually boxed yet. He's at every show supporting his teammates. He never turns up late for training. Take note of this as well, lads. He never turns up late with his subs. His subs are there every time on time. He never moans when somebody else is getting pads because he wants pads. He's a and somebody else told me as well a little story that when they was at a show, one of our guests, he went straight over and he asked if they wanted a drink. And he, and he just checked on them and checked if they was okay. That's what we mean by shining example. The winner of that is Jordan Newell. Jordan Newell is Eastside's shining example this year. Next one, because we pride ourselves on the, the condition of our fighters, all the way from the youngest 11 year old to the gnarliest old pro in Chris Light and Max Maxwell, is the Fittest Boxer Award. This one was a real hard one to pick amongst the gym because there's a lot of fit lads in there, but this goes to Jarrett. Jarrett Doherty has got the Fittest Boxer, and that basically uh, says it all for itself. Super conditioned, super dedicated. Uh, Jared Doherty fits his boxer. The next one is the best performance. Now this could be someone who might not have had the might have only had one fight that season, but it's for one performance. It's the performance that stood out. There can be people who have had better seasons or longer seasons, but this is someone who really stood out. And the winner of this is Usman Ali, 
for his quarter-final win in Liverpool when he beat a kid that not a lot of people expected him to beat and he kind of stood him on his head, he went out there, he'd done everything right, he was confident, he performed well and he gets the best performance award for that one fight in his quarter-final in the Junior ABAs in Liverpool. Right, next one, getting, getting a little bit close to the end now, uh, the best junior. This is, I th um, I'm not sure on the age, I think it's under 17s, but it's anyone 17 or under, or under 17s. The best junior, again, it's no coincidence, the guy who won the best, most dedicated, Spider. He gets the best junior award because he's consistently winning titles, beating good lads, and training hard. Last award in the amateurs, is the best senior basically 17 plus this season tricky one to pick because our seniors didn't get as many fights as they should have uh, so the best senior goes to the busiest lad and also took some hard fights away from home big Cassim. big Cassim wins the best senior award